let's, let's do Galaga. Again, another big quarter eater for my youth. Oh my. Okay, so the fire button works, but it's very slow. And the joystick itself, the input is a little slow. A little slow on the side to side. Of course, in the arcades when we played this, we just wrenched on the on the uh, joysticks and slammed the buttons as hard as we could to get to fire as quickly as we wanted it to. So that part of the experience has been lost in this translation. But it looks good. Sounds good. The aliens are moving the same way the aliens moved in the arcade version. One thing I noticed right away is this whole side, the side over here is all dead area. This is a square screen, but in the arcades, Galaga was a, a tall, vertical game. So they've kind of represented that by not putting any pixels of the game, of the game play over in this area. So really we're just focused on this area right here, the dead center of this square. And that sort of reproduces the long, tall, skinny monitor that was used in the original arcade game. Alright, a little bit more gameplay this time. And, uh, this might get a little better. This, this, this one I got looked to be pretty much brand new and almost unplayed. So this, this firing button might not be broken in yet. Same with the joystick. This, this might improve a little bit over time. Okay, capture my ship. The best part of Galaga is when they take your ship. Well, I'll take that back. The best car part of Galaga is when they take your ship, and then you get it back. And of course, to do that, I've got to not destroy it. There we go. Now I have two fighters. Now, if I can hold on to these two fighters until the challenging stage, I have a huge advantage. Okay, back in the 80s, arcade games didn't get more complex. As the levels went on, they just got harder and faster until you died. Alright, challenging stage. Now, with two fighters, I should be able to get all of them and get a perfect score. Nope, the one that got away. Now, in the arcade, I'd be slamming the fire button so hard people would wonder if I was abusing it. Two got away. 38 hits. Okay, so this, again... It's a really good reproduction of the arcade experience. And other than the minor difficulty if your TV doesn't have the RCA jacks to plug this thing into, this is a very satisfying version. Especially if you compare this to the home console games that came out around the same time. This was available on the Atari 2600. And one of these days I'll pull that out and show you what it looks like. It is nowhere as nice as this. This is probably a 99% faithful reproduction of the, the arcade game. Graphics, sound, everything is spot on. And if I play this long enough, I might be able to find some minor differences. Maybe a glitch or two. But we don't have that kind of time today. And there are other games on this to play. So, I'm going to die here. And go back to the menu. I will come back to you. You're a good game. 
pole position. Now that's where I said this joystick has a built-in function that's very different from other handheld games. You see here it says twist control. And this joystick itself is made to be twisted. And that is your steering on pole position. So let's see how close this is to the arcade. And as you can see, I've, I played this a little bit before I fired it up for you guys. <laughs> the only time in my, in my entire life I had all the top six spots on pole position. And if I remember right, this is the gas? Nope. Oh, it's the shifter. High, low, high, low. There we go. So, give it some gas. Shift. Now I'm twisting the joystick here for steering. This is also a very close adaptation of the arcade game. In fact, I think it's a little bit better. The graphics are sharper. Okay, let's stop for a minute here. On the car here, these are more colorful than I remember the arcade game being. Turning side to side, the graphics switch a little faster. And they seem to be built with a little bit of 3D polygon structure going on in here, which really was not available in 80, 81 when this game first came out. This is pretty smooth graphics. I, I'm fairly confident that the processor inside this little handheld game is probably ten times better than the original processors that those old arcade games ran on. Alright, let's blow the car up. Oh, I've, I've spotted a difference already. I'll have to go over here. Ah. <laughs> game over. I was too slow. So let's play it again. I'll show you one of the differences I just noticed. When the blimp went through, it said Namco. Originally, in the, uh, the arcade game, it said Goodyear, I believe. So the code on this game has definitely been changed. Okay, slow down. Let's creep up to this. There, this billboard. On the original arcade game, this had pseudo-advertisements. And I think on some of them, they actually had real products listed on the billboard. This says pole position. So they have not... And that explosion looks a lot better than the arcade game. I would hazard to say this is not a direct... Oh, there we go. If I could have shown you those. This is not a direct copy of the pole position code. These billboards have the names of the other games on this. This says Galaga. And I passed the Mappy billboard a minute ago. It's a little cross-promotion. And it says pole position. In case you couldn't read it from the... Namco. There we go. Should be able to read that one pretty good. So all the billboards in this game have been changed to promote the handheld that you're playing. The explosion is much better than the arcade version. Yeah, this is not a direct copy of the pole position code. But it's very good. So let's go back to the home screen. Try Zevius. I remember this. I don't think I ever knew what the name of it was, though. I think I remember playing... Oh, there we go, the bomb. Playing 1942 or 1943 in the arcade. And it was like this. This kind of... Airplane shooter game. So yeah, I remember playing this in the arcade. Nice. And again, it was one of those strange, upright screens.
screen so you can see there's nothing going on over here on the sides. We're just gaming in the, the tall section of the screen. Alright, let's go to Mappy, because that is one strange game. If you've never heard of this, don't feel bad. This seems to be really obscure. Yeah, Mappy. He's a mouse. <laughs> okay. Nice little demo here. He picks up boom boxes, TVs, and art, and computers. I don't know who was smoking what when they came up with this game. But apparently Mappy is a mouse master thief. Oh. Open the door and it threw me back into the bad guys. And I'm dead. Now what's going on in here? I really couldn't tell you. You're inside some kind of house and you're running around stealing things. And I have no idea why I'm still going. There we go. Last object to steal. And apparently I won the level. <laughs> so Strange little game. I do not recall ever playing this in the arcade. Uh, apparently they can only kill me when, when they're walking on the same level I am. Because I'm continually bumping into them on the, on the trampoline here. And I'm dead. Nope. Okay, why well, that didn't kill me, I don't know. What a weird little game. And for whatever reason, I won this level as well. So, anyway, there's Mappy. Bonus round. I don't have that in me for that. <laughs> Let's quit. And we're back to the main menu. Alright, Miss Pac-Man by Jack's Pacific. Plug and play. That's an awesome little arcade unit here. Uh, very pleasant. Uh, built very sturdily, too. Very satisfying to hold. So there you go. There's uh, that. And believe it or not, I have another one of these things kicking around. Maybe Pac-Man themed, maybe not. I'm not entirely sure. Because the next one I have, well, you'll see it in a second. Hold on. Okay, so I am back with the third of the handheld devices I bought at a thrift store. Again, this one was manufactured by TV Games. Same plug-and-play architecture. And this one's based on, of course, the Atari 2600. Now, one thing I will say for these games, I'm not sure if you can catch all these cords in the camera shot here, but they are very generous with the length of cable they give you to hook to your television set. I'm pretty sure, unless your, your living room is a cathedral-sized room, you're going to have plenty of this cable to get from the comfy position on your couch all the way to your TV. So that's very handy. I really don't want to sit close to a big screen TV with one of these things and you're three feet away from it. So that's, that's one thing that's very different from the arcade games. Uh, in the 80s we were all hunched over these giant consoles and our faces 18 inches from the screen playing the things. So now we can actually sit way, way, way back on a comfy couch and have the same arcade experience. So this is the Atari port 
adapted plug and play. And we're turning this on. Now I'm not entirely sure what games are on this. All right, let's turn this on and see what games come with this. Again, Jack specific. Okay, there are there are ten games on this, and nothing outstanding. That I was hoping. There's no Pac-Man on this. We do get Asteroids, though. And Centipede. And Missile Command. There are some other interesting games on here. Gravatar, I remember playing that. Adventure is a strange kind of game to put on one of these, but that's a interesting selection. Kind of a fun game, too. But let's let's try Asteroids. And here's here's some puzzling additions. Breakout and Circus Atari, those were played with the the paddles. So how is this joystick going to react to playing a paddle game? I'm not entirely sure. Let's, let's play Asteroids. And one thing I'm also discovering right off the bat, there's no sound on this. There we go. Joystick moves. Oh, I teleported. I'm dead. That sounds like an Atari 2600. And what I will probably do is I do have some footage of me playing the actual Atari 2600 game. Maybe I'll do a side-by-side -side version for you guys. You can see how this Jack Specific stacks up to the original Atari 2600. I am noticing some differences. Might be kind of hard to pick it up, but on the sides of these asteroids, every once in a while, you'll see a flicker of a line. It seems these boulders are cut and pasted in almost like a Photoshop kind of way and laid back onto this. There's some artifacting on the sides of these. Right there, there's one, there's another one. On the sides of these asteroids that were not present in the Atari 2600 version. So, and it also appears inside, there we go. Inside the boulders, there we go. So there are some strange things going on in this. This is not a direct copy of the asteroid's code. This is an approximation. But a fairly good approximation. And of course, this appears to be a, a one-size-fits-all level of asteroids. On the original cart, there were many variations, many different difficulty levels, different kinds of physics you could put on, on the asteroids, so when you hit them, they go flying off in different directions, not just continue on a straight path up and down like these are. So this is like playing the Atari 2600 on difficulty level one. And there's some different sounds that than the Atari 2600 version. These colors also do not look the same. So this is definitely an emulation of the Atari 2600. A fairly good one. And that's not saying much because the Atari 2600 version of Asteroids was just a pale comparison to the arcade game. And I'm not entirely sure that anybody has successfully ported the Atari Asteroids actual arcade game code onto one of these or a PC or a standalone console. At least I have never come across one. I will say 
In a previous video, I reviewed the uh, Game Boy Color-like device, the GB Color. There was also an Asteroids game on that. And again, it wasn't anywhere near the original Asteroids arcade game code. It was an emulation, an improvement actually, on the old code. That sound signals an extra ship, but it's it's a different tone than the Atari 2600 sound. And it sounded sampled. It was not actually a sound made by the processor. It sounded like it was a sample of the original sound, and the sample was played back. It had some really harsh audio tone in it. So yeah, this, this emulation is... Passable. It's good. I mean, if you're not a child of the 80s and you didn't play your 2600 a heck of a lot, you might pick this up and play it and think you're actually playing the Atari version. But you're not. This is a clone of some sort. So let's go back to the main screen and play Centipede. Now, the Atari 2600 Centipede. And this is true with every single Atari 2600 game ever made. I'm talking the original console. Every game on the Atari was a pale, pale comparison of the arcade version. Centipede, especially so. Now that is not the original Atari 2600 start screen. That's pulled in from something else some other system with far superior graphics. And I'm still noticing the same lack of sound when I fire and the lack of sound on the mushrooms <laughs> what are supposed to be mushrooms being destroyed. And there's, there's that weird line, there we go, right there, that weird line that's showing up on... here we go, there it is. Again, like a, almost like a cut and paste in Photoshop kind of deal. This is not the original centipede coding by any stretch of the imagination. There are so many differences in this. The sound is off. The graphics are off. The gameplay is off. But again, if, if you did not play the 2600 in its original run, it certainly looks the part. It looks that vintage kind of graphics that you would expect to have played in the 2600, but it is not. And my batteries are dying here. So to wrap this up, this is the third of the handheld plug-and-play games I got at the thrift store. I paid, I think, $5 for this one, which... In retrospect, I grossly overpaid for. <laughs> Although, uh, these are 15 or 20 bucks each in the store. So, I wanted to relive a little bit of the Atari 2600 experience. This just sort of gets you there. Um, if you had an original Atari 2600, maybe skip this and just go find the original console. You can get them at yard sales and on auction sites. Fairly cheap, 20 bucks, maybe 20, 30, 40 bucks with games. And this only has 10 games in it, and granted, four of them I might play regularly, and the rest were not my cup of tea. So, in retrospect, five bucks for this, eh, I, I guess it's passable. I paid 50 cents per game. If I play at, played Asteroids twice, there's my 50 cents back. That's, maybe that's how I should look at it. These are saving me quarters. <laughs> These are saving me money one quarter at a time. Uh, to rank these from good to worst, well, there's only three of them, so we're, it's not a, a big list. And these really accomplish different things. They set out to accomplish different things. This was supposed to be an Atari 2600 type of experience, and it it it, 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 it passes in that regard. The joystick feels very much like an Atari 2600 joystick. The games react like the 2600 games. They are emula emulations, they are not uh, the exact code, so that might bug some of you arcade purists. These other two try to recreate the actual arcade experience. 
and I think both of them passed with flying colors in that regard. Uh, Miss Pac-Man, this, uh, I would say it's in first place, just because it has more games, more fun games on it than this Super Pac-Man. Because this only Pac-Man on here is a game I would play over and over again. The Pac-Man Pac Plus was interesting, but it was basically just another flavor of Pac-Man. And the Pac-and-Pal and Super Pac-Man on this are <laughs> aberrations of games, and I will never play them again. I hated them when they were in the arcade. I hate them even now. Now even more. So, the original Pac-Man on this stands up as good. Very good. But, the Miss Pac-Man, and this, this handheld just in general, Miss Pac-Man is amazing. It's exactly like the arcade game. Pole position is really good. There are some differences to the arcade game. Galaga, same thing. Very good. Some minor differences. And this Xevious game is nice. It's playable. It's a, like a 1942 jet fighter kind of shoot 'em up game. I like that. Mappy is really weird. Um, I might get the hang of that if I played it some more. And really bouncing off the trampolines and and running from these... apparently they're cats? <laughs> and, uh, Mappy, this is a little mouse here, and he's dressed up as a cop, and so I'm not really sure. Maybe he was supposed to be saving the artwork from the cats who were burglars? I'm not sure. This uh, did not come with instructions, and I've never really heard of Mappy before. Interesting little game, but uh, that m might grow on me. Maybe I'll go back to that and see what that's all about. But the other three games on here are outstanding. Well, four, including Miss Pac-Man. So this one clearly is the winner. This was the best five bucks I spent in a long time. I'm going to get a lot of play out of that. And then second place would be the original version of Pac-Man on this. The other three can take a long walk off a short pier for all I care. And then coming in last would be the Atari 2600 version of this. Eh, neat. Maybe give it to the kids, let them think they're experiencing the 2600. Or the grandkids, for that matter. But uh, you want the genuine 2600 experience like we had back in the 80s, go buy one. There you go. Access Vision. Your voice, your community.